Hey, so you guys asked me to talk about the future of work, um, yeah. future of nomads, and great. Um, I've got some ideas about that. And I want to talk about what we do in a jobless future. Is, okay. I think that when the... Okay, we're gonna, one of the we're, we're gonna gonna first out. introduce you to the audience and we're going to talk about... We've heard, we've heard that you speak Spanish. Is yeah. that true? No, is it true I speak Spanish? Not really. No. Mm -hmm. No estoy muy seguro. Not even hello? Ah, perdón mi inglés. No estoy muy seguro con mi español. Oh, oh. He, he talks, he talks. So um, our, our, our speakers uh, uh, spoke... Spanish as well. That's amazing. Well, people, he is the founder of Education Futures, which is a think tank and advisory firm with a service mission serving government, school, and universities in, in the Americas and Europe. That's He's right. also the creator of the Nomad concept, right? That's exactly what he's going to talk about today. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to come with John right away. Shall we start? Yes. What we, do you we think? Start. We're going to have your presentation. You want to? Is, is our audience ready? ready? Use the hashtag EEMS2018 TT and tell us if you're ready to hear John Moravec. And also send us your notes and write down your questions because John is going to answer them At once the end of he's his done exactly with his presentation. So um, let's do it. It's okay. Time. It's time. It's time. So I'll continue on. I'm uh, working for my iPad today, so I have to scroll through this PDF. But I want you guys to think about the question, so what is a revolution coming to how we work? I mean, just think about that for a minute. What is a real revolution that we're seeing, the real revolutions that are appearing? Um, and um, since we're all on Twitter, um, let's use our hashtag for that. Don't use the Nomad hashtag. I believe it's EMMS2018TT. Uh, so let's use that hashtag for that. Um, and also, I'm more back on Twitter, so if you want to chat with me, complain, uh, share some jokes to uh, we've got that as well. So, um, but yeah, share some of your ideas on what you think that the main uh, changes that we're going to see in the future of work are going to be. Um, so the future ain't what it used to be. And this is a quote from Yogi Berra, uh, who's a, an American baseball player or was an American baseball player. This is from the 1970s. And what he really meant by that is that he didn't mean that the, he just kind of meant the future is kind of turning out to be a little bit different than, than what people thought that, that it used to be. I just thought it was a very nice quote to share and start mm -hmm. um, using with people. Mm -hmm. So here's a picture for, of a gigantic airline in their future. And the next pictures I'm going to show you are actually uh, from the back of cigarette cards uh, from 1939. And these were used around the New York World's Fair. So in 1939, we predicted that we would travel around the world on giant airliners, right? Um, and go from place to place, uh, these jumbo airliners. Yeah. H.G. Wells predicted that we would use spaceships to go around the, to go visit different worlds. Um, that's kind of an interesting thing. We predicted that we would cure cancer. And in this case, that this image shows um, uh, using radiation as a therapy to cure or treat cancer. And we envisioned that we would get together in movie theaters and watch television, that we'd watch live images projected from across the world. So in this movie theater, I guess people are watching live images. Uh, they're streamed in from, from the ocean. And we predicted that we would have synthetic fibers that would really help transform uh, what we do within the clothing that we wear and the clothing industry as well. So what happened, right? We went in and we built it. So we've got jumbo jets, right, that take us to places. That's kind of how I got to Ecuador. Uh, we didn't quite, our spaceships haven't quite been taking us to different worlds. We've gone to the moon. We're thinking about going to Mars and other places, uh, but we do have spacecraft now. We haven't cured cancer, but we we have advanced treatments, including radiation-based treatments and chemotherapy and advanced drugs that are helping us to uh, tackle uh, different cancers. Uh, television killed the radio star, <laughs> and we have RuPaul, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I up RuPaul a little bit as a joke, but um, you know, RuPaul is really, I think, an exemplar of all these changes that we're seeing. And that really reflects that, you know, 
RuPaul wouldn't be RuPaul if it wasn't for the technologies that we have in fabrics and uh, what's, how it's really impacted his industry. And there's a real connection between technological change and personal change and cultural change. And I think it's really important for us to understand this relationship. Now, technologies also allow us to transform who we are and our own identities as well. I don't know if anybody uh, following us uh, today uh, reads Dutch, um, but this is from the uh, from a former social affairs minister in the Netherlands, uh, Ludwig Asker, and he basically says that that robots will soon, um, you know, take away our jobs. Uh, that they never get sick, uh, they work quickly, they work 24 hours a day. And I thought that was kind of an interesting quote. I mean, a lot of people don't think that he's maybe the best uh, social affairs minister, but uh, I think that's a really interesting quote because I think for the first time, uh, we're really hearing a government raise an alarm bell and say, oh my God, robots are gonna take away our jobs. And <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big uh, change, really big transformation. Because normally the job of a government is to tell you, no, 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 everything's going to be just fine. But here we've got a government minister saying, hey, we have, to we have to prepare for this. We have to prepare for robots who will take over our jobs. So when I went to the dentist the other week, um, my, I noticed my receptionist was replaced by software. Uh, instead of being a person, there is a, a laptop or a, a notebook uh, uh, computer that I checked in, they asked me all the different questions, you know, why I'm there, asked for my insurance information, everything that a receptionist would do was replaced by software. And I think that most of us are seeing that already in different places. But I think what's becoming, it's becoming very interesting is that we can ask the question, you know, what other jobs are really at risk here? And this is, I found an interesting article uh, from the Harvard Business Review in April of 2015, where they asked the question, can managers be replaced by software? So can we take a C-level job, like a CEO or a CIO or CFO type uh, task and parcel it out into different pieces and uh, use software to, to, uh, to do what managers normally do? And what they found out is, yes, it's possible to sit down on the laptop, launch ICEO, which is the software that, that he created, and code the preparation of a project worthy of a Fortune 50 company into existence. So they're able to parcel out the different bits and pieces of a complex job out to freelance workers, out to nomads, out to different software, and then bring it all together. And they're able to do it faster and cheaper than what companies are able to do. And that was a really fascinating finding. So I think that the jobs of the future are simply going to be those that software cannot do. Uh, we've got software that's taking over many different roles and it's really, really forcing us to really think differently about us as individuals, as human beings, uh, what sort of value that we may want to add or add into, add into the societies in which we live. So what do you think the future will bring to how we work? Um, again, use the hashtag EMMS 2018TT. Um, let's lend in your own, um, your own uh, thoughts to this as well, okay? And go ahead and, and post that. And I've seen some uh, tweets streaming in the top as alerts on my notifications on my iPad. So um, I'm following what you guys are saying uh, with that as well. So yeah, I'm gonna share what I think a little bit. And I'm gonna get into the nomad concept a bit as well uh, uh, in regard to this. I think that we have two choices. And we have to decide if we want to live in a paradox or amplify our imagination, creativity, and innovation. And now when I say live in a paradox, I'm really referring to Moorbeck's paradox. And I don't mean me, John Moorbeck, but there's a guy called Hans Moorbeck who was a, uh, was a roboticist at Carnegie Mellon University. And he basically said that robots are, and software are able to do the jobs that are really super complex for humans. But humans can't do the jobs that, it, but, but uh, the software can't do the jobs that are the most basic for humans. So we can write software to do what a CEO can do. We can write software to take over a job of a lawyer. We can take over software that does a job of receptionist. 
but we can't create software that can fix our toilets. <laughs> we can't fix a software that's great at gardening. Um, and so I think that's, that, and that's more of X paradox. And that's one choice that we have is, well, gosh, maybe we want to just, you know, leave the complex tasks to software and we can focus on fixing toilets. The other one is, the other option we have is to really amplify our imagination, creativity, and innovation. Now, imagination is a sort of, you know, the ability to imagine different things, to think about things differently or kind of what we'd like to see. Uh, creativity is really applying our imagination at a very personal level. And innovation is a very social thing. And um, it's kind of, like, kind of like social creativity, but it's about creating outcomes that are beneficial. And there are many different, uh, there are many different um, definitions of these terms. Uh, but, but the innovation piece is really key because, well, some people say it has to be replicable, but I really have to say that it has to create a real benefit for the greater community. Now, yesterday, I just gave a talk at, uh, for Girls in Tech in Ecuador, uh, which is an organization that's really focused on encouraging uh, girls and women uh, to train for technology careers. And I think that this is a real opportunity. It's the imagination, creativity, and innovation piece. Because especially when we start looking at the social good, um, women, quite frankly, are far better at this than the men. So I said, you know, probably us men, we're going to probably be the ones that are doing the plumbing and fixing the toilets on this. But, you know, this is a real choice that we have to make. So let's talk about a little bit some of the changes that they're emerging. Um, and I've been using this ugly chart that's got the 1.0, 2.0, and nomadic paradigms. Um, and the 1.0 and 2.0 is really based on the work of James uh, Ilgilvy and Peter Schwartz uh, from uh, SRI in the 1970s. I think they're given something like $2 million to go out and uh, to kind of see what trends, what was trending in the world, that what the different changes that were happening. And the 1.0 and 2.0 columns really reflect that. Now, the nomadic column uh, reflects the work that I've been doing on projecting things towards the future, looking at the changes that we're seeing now, um, and looking quite towards the future. So we're seeing some fundamental relationships that used to be very simple and easy to define to those who are becoming complex creative. And I'd like to use the word teleological because systems are becoming so complex themselves that they're creating their own outcomes, which is really interesting because this also means that the sort of hierarchic conceptualization of order that we had, uh, we're able to direct things from the top down. This doesn't work anymore. We see more self-organization and intentionality being built within systems. Our relationships used to be very mechanical, but now when we're connecting with people, I think that we're looking more and more to build synergies. That is, we're asking what can we build that's bigger than any of us combined. Our role used to, used, to be, uh, used to be determined for us. So it used to be that if your grandfather was a baker, your father was a baker, you were expected to become a baker. And chances are your last name was also Baker. But now that we've got technologies that are taking over these roles, we need fewer bakers, we need fewer lawyers, we need fewer dentists and all these different roles. We need to focus more on design. What is the job that you're going to be? What is identity that you want to be. Um, and, and many people are even starting to design new last names as well to match these new identities. Causality is a very interesting thing because you know change used to happen so much slower. We communicated much slower. And I used to be able to read the newspaper and tell what's happening in the world. Where it's obvious that A cause B cause C cause D right, is very obvious. But now things are happening so fast that newspapers can't catch up. News cycles can't catch up. It looks like A is causing B, which is also causing A, which is causing N, which is causing C, which is causing W. And oh my God, we have Donald Trump. You know, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. How do we get here? And likewise, change processes used to be very assembly based. Um, used to be able to have a great set of instructions on how to make change happen. Uh, but now, organizations need to be more nimble they need to be more agile and they need to be able to engage in creative destruction sometimes we just need to tear everything up and start all over our reality used to be objective we used to be told what reality was now it's contextual how do you see reality and of course our place is much more globalized than it is local 
And you know, doing webinars like this is one of the ways that I think that we really realize that, that uh, globalized uh, space. So let's ask the question. Ask in Spanish, Yorake. Right? So what does this mean for each of us as individuals? It means that we need to, to facilitate creativity. It means that we need to be open and collaborative. It means that we need to build relationships. We need to enable serendipity. That means we have to be willing to take a chance not to be in total control of any situation and to allow the unexpected to happen. We need to enable design in our lives and in the organizations that we work in. We need to be able to adapt, react, and preact as we look towards the future and start taking action now. We have to be agile. We have to be capable of reinventing ourselves as well as our organizations. We have to craft new applications. And we have to engage the world. It's not enough to, set up, to sit by ourselves at home or, or be very insular. We really need to engage with each other around the world. So I like to say the future belongs to nerds, geeks, makers, dreamers, and nomads. And I think that a lot of you already know the term nomad. Um, it's a word that I invented. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that just a little bit to kind of uh, get everybody up to the same speed or same level here. So nomads are creative, imaginative, innovative individuals who can work out just about any time, anywhere, and with almost anybody. Nomads contextualize what they know and how they apply their skills. And many people are already nomadic. Some people by choice, some people not by choice. I see a lot of people uh, driving Uber or taking on different jobs. That's kind of freelance work, which is sometimes nomadic. Uh, but nomads can also work within organizations as being connectors, as, as making things happen within organizations by taking what they know and contextually applying to solve problems. Um, a few years ago, we projected that nomads would be about 45% of the workforce in the West by 2020. I think that number is going to be quite a bit more, and other people are looking at that, especially to talk about freelance workers and stuff. I think nomadic workers are going to be uh, quite a bit more than 50% very soon. Nomads are focused on personal development, and that's a question of, so what do I want to bring into the world? They're futures oriented. Uh, they're prepared for accelerating technological, social, and economic change. No and they're focused on skills that enable mobility, you know, being able to work and act anytime, anywhere, and taking the individual knowledge that we have to contextually solve problems. You know, how can I take what I know to help you solve your problems, or how can we create things together? I think that a real key for learning and for nomadic learning is that we need to enable agency and self-efficacy. Now, agency is being allowed the freedom to learn what you want to learn or to do what you need to do. Self-efficacy is really believing in ourselves that we can do this, that, that, we can, uh, that we can make these changes, that we could learn these things. And one of the challenges that we have in mainstream schooling is that there is so much control that there is very little chances for agency. Now, nomads aren't restricted by age. It could be anybody at any age could be a nomad. They thrive in flat networks, not in hierarchies. Nomads are always learning. They're always unlearning as well as, as we need to because what we need to know always changes and, and even the levels that we know always changes. Nomads use new technologies purposively, not just because we think we need to use new, new technologies to do some cool stuff, but because we have some ideas that are very specific as to what we want to do. Nomads contextualize knowledge to create solutions. Nomads learn tacitly and explicitly. And so what I mean by that, uh, explicit learning is kind of like, you know, you can learn explicitly by listening to me in this webinar, or you can learn explicitly by reading a book. Tacit learning is kind of like learning by doing, like riding a bicycle. You can read 15 books on riding a bicycle. You can take a seminar on riding a bicycle. You can take an exam on riding a bicycle, but you'll still not uh, be able to know how to ride a bicycle until you go out and try it. It's learning by doing. Now we combine these two forms of knowledge together, we create personal knowledge. And that's what makes us really unique and really valuable as human beings. 
Now, nomads love to collaborate, right? They love sharing, they love collaborating, they invite sharing, and I wanna say most importantly, nomads are not afraid of failure because, because failing is one of the best ways that we learn. Now, the thing that we need to do to help all of us is to make sure that we do not become failures ourselves. okay? I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> So nomad schools, uh, sorry, nomad skills include things like uh, critical thinking, computational thinking, searching, synthesize, synthesizing, and disseminating information, uh, being creative and innovative in our orientations, collaboration, contextual learning, self-direction, great communicators. And this is from a list that Cristobal Cobo uh, wrote in the book Nomad Society that I edited. And there, I, there's also quite a bit more. I think we can talk about entrepreneurship is a great skill. Being a nice person is a great skill too. Uh, because if the world's changing so fast, we'll never have the knowledge that we need fully to apply for uh, jobs in the future. But just maybe somebody think that we're smart enough um, and uh, nice enough to pass the job interview. Now these are all a set of skills called soft skills which are very hard to teach and very hard to measure. But I think that these are really critical for nomadic uh, learners. Now we wrote a book about this called Nomad Society. And you can get that, at, uh, you could buy it on Amazon, you can download it online. And if anybody wants a free copy, a digital copy, you're free to email me and I'm happy to send you a copy of Nomad Society. We also have an earlier book called Aprendizaje Invisible, and I'm happy to share that with you too. So just let me know. But I am happy to share this book with you for free um, because I want to make the most of um, what we have with this resource. Okay. And I want to also invite you to share it as well. Okay. It's not just my book, but this is something I think that is for all of us. Now, here's a Kasha. And this was a, <laughs> a recent article. I think this is from the New Yorker um, that the gig economy celebrates working yourself to death luck we're great we're getting great um, great uh, boost in productivity from machines and software uh, but we can't expect ourselves to achieve the same gains and efficiencies as humans so let's celebrate ourselves as human as humans let's attend to ourselves let's attend to our bodies let's attend to our minds don't work ourselves to death the machines will do that for us we need to focus on how can we be more human and in a very nomadic way. So as I'm about to wrap up here, I just really want to emphasize that I think that the future that we need to focus on is imagination, creativity, and innovation. And as we go in the conversation, maybe we could talk about this a little bit more, but how do we, we need to really start thinking about how do we engage each other in boosting our imaginations? How do we, how do we create more creative spaces for each of us? And how do we come together as communities, uh, of practice, communities of professionals, communities of nomads to truly innovate? And you know, kind of like RuPaul, how are we gonna blend with the technologies that we have to really invent ourselves, to invent our own identities, our own nomadic identities, and the ways that we wanna be and how we present ourselves in very unique and very cool ways. Now the Nomads Business School in Amsterdam uh, sets off their students with four leading questions, I think, to help us get there. The first is, you know, what world do we want to live? And that gets back to my, my earlier questions is, like, like, what is a change that you want to see? What do you want to contribute? What do you want to change? Right? Start thinking about our roles in this. What is your role in making this change happen? How can I best organize to get it done? But gosh, it's starting to look like a marketing problem in a way, isn't it? Uh, but how are how do we connect and bring these pieces together? And then how do we bring this into the world, right? And how do we create this beauty of, uh, of uh, realizing, actualizing our dreams into the world? So let's check in. Um, again, let's use the hashtag EMMS2018 TT. Um, I, I'm not able to get live feedback from a live audience, so I don't know um, if I'm making any sense or not. <laughs> but i um, happy to open back up to uh, conversation, questions, etc. And 
yeah, I'm here for the next few minutes, guys. Just let me know. Okay. Well, that was a lot of info to actually digest. To put, to put, to put it all together and try to improve your business in order to all the advices that you have um, said today, right? Yes. That's exactly yes. I mean, yeah. I, Well, that's about improving businesses, but I think it's also about improving ourselves as, uh, as workers, and as leaders within organizations and creating yes. organizations that help support nomadic workers. Yes, actually, I wrote down... Uh, you said a lot of things, but I wrote down that we probably, as selves, we should be innovative, creative. Um, we have to unlearn, which is something really good to point out. Um, not afraid of failure, and be comfortable with new technologies. Use no new technologies, and you know, like take uh, encourage to use them. I mean, don't be afraid, right? Yeah, because and, and that what he said about. Right. Self-efficacy. I mean, it was like, like, I don't know, like mind-breaking. <laughs> like, exactly. I, I thought that maybe it's that point where you, where you get to think about what you're doing, how much value are you adding to things that you do, uh, and to the environment that you share your, I don't know, your, your place with, right? Exactly. Right, and self-efficacy, I think, is really important. It's that feeding ourselves to do things. Oops, sorry. Um, what were you saying, John? <laughs> I, I think no, self self efficacy is a very important thing because that's about believing in ourselves to do what we want to do or to learn what we want to learn. And I think that so much of the the old way of thinking, the old way of management, the old way of learning has been really to crush that sort of self efficacy to say no. You're going to do what, what you're told to do or what we think you need to do. And um, I think that by ex expanding for or to more self-efficacy, I think that really helps us to boost our abilities to imagine and be creative as well. Yes, exactly. That's so, right. Um, I well, think we have a few questions. Um, I wonder if they're ready. No, so, I, I have one here. I okay. Mean, it's, uh, it says, like, how can we start... I mean, we're not even thinking about doing this, or, or it wasn't in our plans. How can we actually take the first step to become a nomadic? Well, when you say we, what do you mean by we? I mean, we as, as people, as, as, as the people who are, who's watching. <laughs> All right, so I think that the first step is, I think it's like at those four, the, those four uh, questions well, for nomads. Oops, I just uh, closed my screen there. Uh, those four questions for nomads which is, in what world do we want to live, right? Uh, what do I want to contribute and change? How can you best organize to get it done? And how do I bring it into the world? And I think that focusing on some organizational questions that help us focus on, okay, so who is it that I want to be and what I want to do, and then how can I bring things together? I think that's, that's really critical. And this is, it's kind of like creating a personal marketing plan in a way, when you think about it. Uh, but, I think that also with teams of people as well, it's like, so what sort of incredible value can we do? And then we can start asking each other, well, so what tools and resources do you need to be truly successful? Am I making sense? Yes, yes, it does, okay. it does. I, I, okay, so um, we just, are... No, it's just yes. like, it's a, like a, such a complex group of things that maybe if we put it together, we might be ending up into something else or not. <laughs> so it's like a lot of things to be... Um, paying attention to and for example people um, yes we people ask uh, through through net uh, through, through Twitter. chat yes. yes as well what are the features of a nomadic which they should first um, start with if they want to be a nomad where yeah. should, should they start um, first I think that the, the first place is to be open and collaborative and share what you want to learn, share what you want to do. Um, I think that, that openness, I think also helps us being open to learning uh, because what we need to learn, it changes so much every day. And it used to be, uh, I, I know we have a lot of people in Spain joining in today and uh, in Latin America, and it used to be that if you sur survived school, you know, you could go to school as late until you're 28 years old, and then you're, you're considered to have the knowledge. Exactly. Well, that's exactly. We, yeah, we, we have to, to, to learn. learn. 
th throughout life. And it's like they don't just start a career or something, or then have a second career or whatever. But it's just it's a continuous process, and being really open to that, and communicating with people, connecting with people, collaborating with people, uh, sharing what you want to do and what you want to learn. Um, I think that helps to open possibilities. Exactly. Exactly. Great. That's right. Um, I think we we are um, done with. Well, there are a few questions still on Twitter. So but uh, we're running out of time. Yeah, we'll have exactly. to continue a little I'll, bit. I'll be, I'll be on Twitter a little bit. I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna go to a cafe. I'll get some coffee and I'll. I'll oh, you're enjoy still on Twitter. Twitter that, okay. That's good to know for all our audience. So if you have some questions, John said that he knows Spanish a little bit. So we'll try <laughs> our best, and we can help him as well. Doppler can help you. Yeah. Um, to resolve your oh there you are so it's M Orobeck on Twitter so um, you can our audience can follow you and they can ask yeah. you if they have still some questions um, well thank you so much do you want to say something else goodbye to our audience <laughs> yeah thanks guys well thanks for thinking about me um, yeah but continue the conversation on Twitter if anybody has any any questions and stuff let me know um, we're putting together some new books so I like hearing some feedback um, it also helps us plan because we also do a lot of workshops and, and trainings right. and, and work with people so I, I like to hear uh, the big questions you have so that we can start uh, addressing them in in the work that we're doing that's really emerging so it's a great learning opportunity for me so thank you for inviting yeah, so, me so people I'm even grateful. you can even invite john to come over to your country because he's got right. he's going everywhere he's traveling all yeah. over the world so uh he's probably going to be pretty close to your country anytime soon so well thank you so much again all the doctor team thanks to you to be here with us on the EMMS and bring all your knowledge to our audience. And um, well, we, we thank you again. And I think we are, it's time to, to move into the other speaker, right, Enio? Yes. Okay. Like Goodbye, guys. John. See Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye, John. Thanks Bye. for being here. Thanks for being part of the EMMS. Un placer. Un placer. Adios. Adios.